In this video, I will show you how to use solar panels directly without a battery. There are several methods to accomplish this directly. From the solar panel, through a buck converter with a P-Web converter with a larger pump controller, or through an off-grid inverter. Let's start with the easiest. You can power 12 VT loads from a method 112 VT single, 18 VT solar panel. This can be a buck pump or a fan, however, this is not good for the appliance as it could potentially reduce its lifespan. I wouldn't do this with more expensive electronic equipment, only DC motors. You cannot attach this to an inverter because the input voltage will be too high. The problem here is that the pump will not run at its maximum speed. The next method will make this better without the risk of damaging your appliances. This involves using a step method. Method 2. Book Converter Down, or Book Converter A. Book Converter takes a higher voltage and steps it down to a lower voltage. You can use this to power your USB devices. When you use this module, this converts the SOAR panel's voltage to 5 volts. Most book converters will be 12 VT at the output, but you can also get 24 or 48 volt models. This converter's input voltage is 15 to 40 volts, which is ideal for solar panels. If you have more than one solo panel, you will likely need to wire panels in parallel. We can use this method to power 12 VT DC loads and add an inverter to run AC loads. This converter has an input voltage range of 36 to 96 volts, which is useful if you want to add solar panels in series. Let's explain how we connect these with a practical example. A viewer of the channel wanted, Practical example to power a 51 AC pump. Let's design such a system. With a book converter and an inverter first, the load is 50 watts. Let's say the surge power is five times the normal running power, so we need a total of 250 WS to get a total of 250 WTS of power. We need to have 400 WTS of solar panels. This might seem a lot, but there are quite some conversion losses. Let me explain. A 100W solar panel works at about 80% of its rated power, so four panels becomes a maximum input of 320 watts. We will use a BKEC converter rate for 12VT output at 30 AUI MFOUs or 360 watts. The max input voltage is 96 volts, so we have to connect the panels in a 2S2P configuration, that is two sets of two panels in series and then connect it in parallel. The efficiency of the book converter is 90%, so we get 288 watts on the output, let's say. The 300W inverter uses 15 watts of idle consumption. Now we have 273 watts left. Then the inverter has an efficiency of 90%. We are only left with 245 watts at the output enough to handle the 50W pump and handle the search current. As you probably have already noticed, it's better to use a DC pump instead of an AC pump to increase efficiency and reduce costs. You can repeat this calculation for your own devices. If your device doesn't have motors, then you don't have to add search power into the equation. Do you like the content of this video? Subscribe to the channel to keep updated whenever I post new PWM speed controller videos. If you want to control the speed of these motors like a pump or a fan, then you can use a PWM speed controller. A PWM speed controller is just like the book converter, but the difference is that you can use the tuner knob to regulate the output voltage. This is something the previous book converter could not do. So if you want to adjust the speed of your DC motor, use the PWM speed controller another but less reliable way of controlling the speed of a DC motor is tilting the solar panel or moving it into the shade if you have large pumps you can pump controller. Use a pump controller. I have seen this used to pump water from wells or ponds. The ID here is the same as with a converter attach, enough solar panels to the controller to run a pump. The pump controller has higher power and you can add float switches to the system to start or stop the pump when a certain level has been achieved. A pump controller is available in different voltages like 1, 2, 2, 4, 4, 8 or even 96 volts. These are only used for DC pumps so there are less conversion losses. I will link some videos where people use these in the hybrid inverter description. 
When B inverters are insufficient, you can use an off-grid hybrid inverter without batteries. This is a Grow, which cost $650. I will link it in the description as well. This, this is the only hybrid inverter that I know of that can work without batteries. The larger the load, the more solar panels you need. The output is a pure sine wave with a maximum of 3,000 watts. The solar panel's power must be greater than the load. The manual states that the MPPT input requires a minimum of 120 volts and a maximum of 250 volts, with a maximum solar input of 4,000 watts if we use these cells from Scent and Solar with a power rating of 365 watts and an open circuit voltage of 48 volts. We need to wire 10 panels in a 5S2P configuration, that means 5 panels in series time 2, and then in parallel, then we have a VMP of 195 volts and the current of 18.66 AEMMs for a total of 3,650 watts. These panels cost $1,590 without shipping. The total cost, including wires, would be $2,400. However, adding a small battery will help start inductive loads like a motor, a fan, or AC share which Miad you are going to use in the comments so we can learn from each other. Want to learn more about off-grid solar power? Check my book in description. A like would be highly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Until next time. For a total of 3,650 watts, these panels cost $1,000. $590 without shipping. The total cost, including wires, would be $2,400. However, adding a small battery will help start inductive loads like a motor, a fan, or AC share, which Miad you are going to use in the comments so we can learn from each other. Want to learn more about off-grid solar power? Check my book in description. A like would be highly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Until next time.